Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Today, we're going to be talking about a number of things, but uh, top among them, chief among them, we're, we're going to be talking about my 10 most carried traditional uh, slash slip joint knives of 2020. But as always, we're going to go through a pocket check. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Patreon knife giveaway that's coming up this Thursday night, Thursday Night Knives. Uh, talk about the state of the collection, a couple of new knives that have come my way fortuitously, and then a, um, one or two little uh, knife stories uh, and maybe a follow up on something I've been fetching about a lot recently. Uh, so all of this and more on episode number 173, our midweek supplemental. And uh, I'd like to start by showing off what I'm carrying today. Um, this pocket check is a, a special one because, well, I'm at home today and I can carry this, A, and B, it's um, it's hot on the heels of all the cold steel uh, hullabaloo, and it's gotten me thinking about the knives I want to get, uh, you know, in the in the very near future from them. And the list is very short because I have a bunch of them already. Uh, I I really like the large folders, uh, as you know. Uh, but today's pocket check, uh, I was carrying the I am carrying the large cold steel Espada, and uh, the Espada here is really one of the knives that got me going on their extra large knives. I mean, I had the, um, that's that's not true. It was the Vaquero uh, that really did it. But when this came along, it fulfilled all of the wishes uh, that the Vaquero promised. Uh, to look at the Vaquero, you'd say, hmm, sort of reminiscent of a Navaja. And that's the knife, uh, the large Spanish folding fighting knife that I've I've just always been in love with. And uh, to see someone, especially Cold Steel, come out with a modern, super tough, uh, super capable version of such a knife and not have it be uh, just a novelty really uh, sent my head spinning. The, the Espada series is just awesome. I don't have any of the small ones, but I have uh, this large one and I have an XL dressed the same way in this sort of in the blasted blade and the G10. And then I have this this giant one right here. Uh, well, this is also a, a, a same seven and a half inch blade. But what I meant is fancy, not giant. It is giant. But this fancy one here you see uh, with the shiny uh, bolsters, uh, polished steel bolsters and this beautiful polished steel G10 handle with all the, the contouring. Anyway, so um, I want to get that version, that dressed up version of this uh, Espada. And uh, one thing that has changed over the years with this particular model is that blade shape. This is a very early version. This is the first version of the G10 large Espada that came out. And it's got this incredibly long uh, clip here. Very, very long clip, almost the full length of the blade. And on the newer versions, I think for the past several years, I mean, it's been a while, uh, they extended the, the spine out a little bit, and then uh, it's a shorter swedge. So it looks a little bit more like a traditional Bowie, a little bit more like uh, the kind of Bowie we've come to recognize, uh, shape we've come to recognize from Cold Steel. And I very much want to get that in the dressed up version. Uh, I think that's pretty much my... my uh, my Cold Steel Wish, our good friend Dave at This Old Sword uh, Blade Reviews, sent me my second to last Cold Steel Wish uh, several months back uh, with the uh, with the Immortal. Such a cool knife. It's the one that looks like the Gladius. So I think uh, if I get the Espada and the dressed up version large, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And, and then, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot out there. And, uh, you know, as the years go by, I'll pick up more. But uh, to to really feel like I'm secure in my cold steel collection, I need a dressed up version of that. Uh, so I've been carrying this today. Love this knife. Um, the other one has been uh, just barely missed the list today. Ten most carried traditional slip joint knives of 2020. This was my birthday knife of uh, what was it? August of 2018, I believe. Uh, let's see when this is dated. 2018. Yeah, I got this in 2018 for my birthday. It's the number 44 pattern. Incidentally, 44 has always been my favorite number. And so I was excited to see a gunstock pattern come out from them. And they call it the 44. And it was right around my birthday. Huh. It was just Providence. Look at that. 
that so that's why they call it a gun stock um that shape of the handle there this is in gabon ebony wood you got the hot dog shield there uh, that some people dislike i like it uh, i like hot dogs i like eating them uh this has a really long and useful uh pen blade and just that gorgeous clip so this is sort of the working version, and then and then they have some versions of this knife that are dressed up. Of course, they always do a stag run, uh, and then and then they have some some different, uh, more elaborate or more fancy, um, <laughs> fancy elaborate. Those are my adjectives. Versions of this in the Tidu line. So uh, this recently I uh, took the patina off of it and uh, turned it back into a civilized uh, man's knife. So. That is my pocket check. Uh, why don't you call the listener line, 724-466-4487, and let me know what you're carrying. I want to put together, uh, uh, over a couple of weeks, maybe this holiday season, put together a little montage, a little audio montage of pocket checks and then things, you know, holiday wishes, people that, I mean, not like, I hope everyone has a great holiday. We'll we'll just assume that that's baked in, right? We're all a community here. We all hope we all have a good holiday. What I want to hear is, what I want for Christmas is dot, dot, dot. Or, uh, you know, I've been dropping hints to my wife about dot, 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 that kind of thing. Or or maybe uh, maybe it's a simple gift to yourself or something you want to gift someone else. Uh, <laughs> I am the wrapper of the house of Christmas items, and there have been a, there's been a glut of boxes here. And uh, I, I opened them all, and I told my wife to go through them to make sure I didn't see anything I wasn't supposed to. And uh, she cleared it, and then lo and behold, I found... I found a little uh, Gerber money clip knife. So I think that's coming to me. Sorry, baby, uh, but I had you check. Uh, so um, let me know what you want uh, in your stocking. Let me know what you want under the tree. I want to put that together. And then maybe uh, maybe we find out what everyone's gotten. And then we, and then we put up another a montage of disappointment. <laughs> That'd be fun. Uh, so anyway, really uh, call the listener line, 724-466-4487, and leave us a message. Please, no one calls me. No one calls me. Uh, so uh, there you go. Uh, next thing I want to talk about really quickly is Patreon. Please check us out on Patreon. We have a three, five, and ten dollar level. The traditional junkie, the um, uh, tactical junkie, and the gentleman junkie, uh, respectively. And if you're a gentleman junkie, that means ten bucks a month, and it also means you're entered automatically into a monthly knife giveaway. This month. Uh, you know, I've been on a traditional kick and I've been, I've been sort of teasing at, um, we're going to give away a traditional. Well, this time it's happening. And, uh, I actually, uh, just purchased it. I don't have it in hand, but I will, uh, by tomorrow night, Thursday night knives. Uh, and it is, uh, we bought it from our good friend, Mike Latham over at, uh, collectorknives.net because, uh, man, what, what a sight. I, I gotta get, get him back on the show. He's, He's a purveyor of much beauty, and he's a creator of much beauty in his collaborations with the Italian knife makers. But anyway, we will be giving away a knife much like this. This is the GEC number 38. Uh, the one we are giving away will have green tractor bone, jigged tractor bone. So it looks like that John Deere green. It is absolutely beautiful. As a matter of fact, no, I'm going to give you this one, and I'm going to keep this one for myself. Uh, because I love that green. I've been lurking on the site for over a year. Uh, and, and I ended up getting a, well, that improved trapper in that same green. And uh, wouldn't it make a great stable mate? But no, no, through the generosity of my spirit. Here, I'm going to put this on the knife cam. Through the generosity of my spirit, I'm going to actually going to be giving it away, like I'm, I'm saying. So there it is. It'll be this, the 38. This is in... Um, uh, this is an, an exotic Mexican wood, Bocote, I think it's called Bocote, and uh, just a beautiful shape to this thing. They have made knives on this 38 frame uh, with the blade coming out on this side, and it's kind of swells at the end here. Uh, swell end jack, maybe they call it, who knows? Serpentine swell end jack, perhaps. Um, but so that's what we're going to be giving away. So hurry up and sign up on Patreon and you could win uh, Great Eastern Cutlery number 38 in green tractor bone. And they call the 38, this version of the 38, the 38 special. And I think it comes with a button, if you care. A lot of people like that. A lot of collectors of Great Eastern Cutlery like to get the tubes uh, that have the buttons in them. I don't care. It's like, oh, it's nice, but they go away in the tube forever. So it will come with that, I'm pretty sure. 
Mm. Delicious coffee. Well, uh, let's move on to the state of the collection. I got a couple of knives that have uh, come to me that I want to show off. Uh, if you watched Thursday Night Knives last week, uh, you caught some of them, or one of them, maybe two of them. But I'm going to show them right here for, for all history. So coming up on the state of the collection, we have the Victorinox Pioneer X. We have the GEC number 23 Trapper, and we have the Case Peanut CV. Now, uh, the Pioneer was a just an Amazon purchase. You know, I have a I have an, an ongoing cart right now, it being the holiday season, and it's been in my uh, wish list for a while, and it kind of slipped into the cart. And it ended up in one of these boxes full of gifts. And lo and behold, I figured it would be a good wrapping knife because it's got the scissors. Now, that's one thing I, uh, the main reason I got this. So this is the uh, the case, uh, the case, the Victorinox Pioneer X. So the Pioneer is a model that is much like a traditional scout knife in that it has the, um, it has the main blade. It has a cap lifter and uh screwdriver there and wire stripper and it's got an awl really awesome awl but what makes this an x oh so my point in that is showing that that a traditional scout knife has the awl it has the the uh, main blade it has all the same tools as this victorinox pioneer but the x refers to this feature one of the best tools Victorinox makes, the scissors. And um, so it's an Alox, and I love Alox. It's beautiful. The one thing that always sticks in my craw is really you can't engineer a little pocket in the Alox handle to put the 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 um, tweezers and the toothpick. I mean, the tweezers and the toothpick are the other uh, best tools on the Victorinox, as far as I'm concerned. I love the scissors. I love the the tweezers, the toothpick. And, you know, everything else is great, too. But uh, for handiness, you, you can't beat them. So I say the uh, ALOX series is just the greatest thing going. But don't make us sacrifice those two awesome tools uh, for this great uh, aluminum, you know, knurled aluminum material. Just a just a thought. Uh, but so it's like a, a dream scout knife because you have the, the addition of the scissors. So uh, yeah, that has been on the that has been in the bin for a while, and I uh, finally I finally pulled the trigger, thinking, well, I could use this to to do the thing on the wrapping paper where you you just start a little cut and then you go, Shh. but it ends up I'm not very good at that. I never have with the scissors, so I always take the blade, start a cut on the end, put it upside down, and and you get a nice straight line. If you follow the follow the the tube of the wrapping paper, you get a nice straight line. And uh, the gratification of sliding a blade through paper and seeing it yawn open at your command. So, uh, yes, the Victorinox Pioneer X, highly recommended. The next one, uh, this was a uh, something I was looking at all. No new knife November. It, it was on uh, it was on CollectorKnives.net, and I was just hoping that no one was going to get it during the month of November. And lo and behold, I felt like if I could do the thing you do at at the store where you take the last thing that you like and you kind of hide it elsewhere where no one will look for it. I felt like if I could do that on that website, I would, I would have taken it and put it like, uh, you know, on the last page of, uh, of you know, discontinued uh, quartermaster knives or something like that. So no one would find this. Uh, Great Eastern Cutlery, number 23, Trapper. I'm gonna put this on the knife cam. And let me, let me, ah, ooh, almost a nail breaker. This thing has a, I would call it an eight pull uh, to open the main blade. And uh, yeah, it's a fingerprint magnet. Very stout, but what a beautiful, beautiful main blade that is. I guess you would consider that a drop point. Uh, you see the uh, unexcelled, unexcelled um, etch on there, that'll, that'll wear off. If I ever use this, I don't think I'm gonna use this. This is a safe queen. I, I want to keep this pristine. It's so beautiful. So it's based on a Remington, traditional Remington Hunter, uh, which are very large. I, I didn't really realize, I mean, I guess I looked at the specs, but I didn't realize before I got it that it's uh, it's almost a four inch blade, you know? One, two, three, yep, almost a four inch blade. I mean, that's as big as, 
uh, and you know, most of the tactical regular front right pocket knives I carry around. And uh, it's got a, like I said, a very, very stout pull. And then this amazing spay blade. Let me clean this off. Amazing. I love this thing. I, I'm a big sucker for the spay blade. I don't think it gets much, uh, much attention. However, it does remind me a bit of the cotton sampler. If you look at it, it's kind of the same, same sort of blade, you know, uh, similar anyway. So this 23 comes in this beautiful bone. I can't remember exactly what the bone die is called, but it's, uh, this is what I always love, right in the transitions where you come out of the deep color of the bone and then as it gets buffed and sanded down to match the uh, to match the bolsters, you get the light coming through and you get that sort of gradient look. So beautiful. And then uh, this, I, I, I'm overusing the word, I apologize. This is, uh, I think, large peach seed uh, jigging, if I'm not mistaken. And then that is a, uh, Mike, let me know if that's correct. And then this right here is the... Uh, traditional sort of bullet shield that you find on the on the Remington that this is based on. And luckily it's got a half stop because uh, you almost need to grip the knife like this to close it because it's it's pretty stout. Um, and it's kind of uncarryable. <laughs> I'll say like the, the only way I would really carry this I think is on a belt sheath and I'm not much of a folding knife belt sheath guy. However, as I age, when I get older, I don't care. I'm just going to be walking around with whatever I want on my belt. And, and this kind of thing might, might, might appear there too, you know, just like some sort of, you know, the, the kind of belt sheath you see for a, for a buck 110 uh, on, on an, on a guy's hip. That'll be me later. Right now it doesn't quite fit, uh, but that's the only way I can really see carrying this. It doesn't fit in any of my pocket slips, even the one that, that can carry a buck 110. I mean, I can cram it in there, but it's the, what's the point of doing that? It's like sticking a leather, it's, it's, there's no point in doing that. So in any case, uh, I, before I move on from this, let me just show you the size of this trapper versus a traditional large trapper from Case Knives. Yeah, center them up. I mean, it's a, it's a big difference. I, I always considered these Case trappers to be pretty big knives and uh, <laughs> it it fits within you know the size of this, um, so yeah. One substantial trapper knife. Okay, lastly, but not leastly, is the Case Peanut CV I got for a song from a, a gentleman on Blade Forums, and um, I've always wanted basically this peanut, and it's the chestnut bone, pocket worn pocket worn make you know so it's got rounded bolsters and it's made to look like it's been in someone's pocket for years and years and uh, i love that chestnut bone I think it's beautiful and then it's got the cv beautiful is the word of the day i'm i'm i'm, I'm hearing my my little crutch words uh they're coming out loud and clear so i'm just gonna say this is fetching <laughs> and that's the last time i use the word fetching forget fetch it ain't happening uh cv steel that means chrome vanadium that means their version of 1095, presumably. And uh, you got this very useful, very nice little pen blade. This came screaming sharp. The guy who owned this before me uh, really, really got it quite sharp. So I love this thing. Looks like it's ancient. And I don't know, I haven't dated it, but uh, I, I think it's, you know, fairly new. Uh, so case peanut love it if you want a small knife i mean that's the size of the little rattler that's the size of the, of the number six pemberton from gec they're all the same size and I, I believe the the mini or micro uh trapper from case is the same size and the pocket hunter they're all very small so, uh um let me just tell you how small before i move on two and a half inches uh, or like yeah two and a half inches two and three quarter inches closed and uh these are great perfect size for putting in uh, the fifth pocket on jeans. I know a lot of people say that about knives that go up to you know this size. They're like, oh, great, fifth pocket. For me, that if you put a knife in that fifth pocket, it's, 
got to be very small so it doesn't obstruct the removal of the main knife in that pocket. So uh, case CV, uh, try, uh, check out the peanut is what I'm trying to say. And I'm all distracted now because there's this uh, person on the screen telling me to tell you not to take dull for an answer. Yes, go to thenifejunkie.com slash dull to get your white t-shirts or, or slash dull two, like you see on the screen right here, to get your don't take dull for an answer. Well, merchandise, really, I shouldn't say t-shirt. I'm just looking at that t-shirt in particular. Um, go there to get that. Uh, this is a, this is going to be a big Christmas item in my house. <laughs> Hopefully it is in yours too. Look at that. You can walk around and let people know that you're a fan of the show, but even more importantly, that you have, well, you have values when it comes to cutlery. And uh, and this this lets everybody know that. So don't take dull for an answer. There are also uh, uh, logo, uh, there's logo merchandise and uh, and a lot of other cool stuff. Jim Jim made some some other, uh, well, you'll, you'll see it when you get there. Yes, don't take dull for an answer. Check out the Knife Junkie merch at thenifejunkie.com slash dull or slash dull two. And uh, you'll be happy you did. Uh, please, uh, if you're here on YouTube, please subscribe, like, hit the button, and all that. Uh, it really helps also share the video. If you know someone else who's getting into knives or is into knives or just, you know, likes to listen to this kind of talk, send them the video. That's a great help. That's like one of the best things you can do. So thank you very much. So now we move on to new things in the knife market. We call it Knife Life News. Uh, so very, very, very small uh, Life Knife News section today, but I, I feel like um, I feel like I have to tie something up in a bow and that'll be the uh, the Knife News Annual Readers Poll. Uh, I want to talk about that one last time. I, I'm sorry if I, if I prevaricate on that and and moan about it a little bit too much. And then I also want to talk about, and firstly, actually, we'll talk about James Brand. Uh, they are adding brass to their new EDC collection. And uh, well, let's get into it right now. You know, um, James Brand, uh, I always like to pretend not to like because it's really cool. It's like uh, overly hip in a way, and I shouldn't say overly. It's just slick, beautiful stuff. And it comes from a different uh, sensibility than than you know, I come at knives from the Rambo side of things. These people come at knives from the Nike design side of things. And they produce some really beautiful products, not just um, uh, not just limited to knives. Uh, and so the, let's see, we spoke recently, I'd say three months back, the James Brand Pike. That's their new slip joint knife. It's a, a, um, a Warren Cliff with a, with a very neutral cigar shaped handle. Well, that product, uh, that product along with a really uh, nice small pen that folds up very discreetly and uh, a, a carabiner multi-tool kind of thing that they make, they've all put them into a same line uh, and added brass. I, I guess they're all in the same line, but they've they've uh, added brass as a dressed up component to it. And uh, that is something that I love because uh, brass, immediately, not immediately, but almost right after you get it in hand starts to show um, history. And if you're the sort of person who has, um, well, has that aesthetic or, or has that taste, someone who likes things that look old and used, uh, but maybe you have a lot of knives so they don't all get a chance to get old and used because you rotate through them, to have something like brass um, or copper on a knife is a great thing because it, it, it pretty much immediately starts to patina. It's kind of the same thing with uh, what I like so much about the chrome vanadium cases or the 1095 uh, Great Eastern Cutlery Knives. You know, they get the patina on them and uh, well, that's it. They start to look like these beautiful, um, uh, beautiful old products. What can I say? So uh, yeah, really like the uh, the James Brand Brass Collection. Uh, check that out. And the Pike is the knife that that they have in there. Um, I would say that's well worth checking out if you like slip joints, if you like worn cliffs, if you like kind of classy, cool products, or you like you have someone in your life who you know would benefit from a knife, but is not a knife person, but has some style. Man, you get them a James Brand knife. That's their knife, and and they have it, and and who knows, maybe it turns them on to to other things as well. The second bit I wanted to get to was the uh, uh, Knife News Annual Reader's Choice Poll. Uh, you know, I've been I've been uh, 
talking, complaining a lot uh, recently in the past couple of shows about how people are choosing uh, the readers of Knife News, a, a publication that I check in with all the time and that I love. Um, my fellow readers of that uh, online magazine have voted on some very kind of pedestrian things. And maybe pedestrian is, is, uh, is, is unkind. I don't mean that they're bad products, but when, when the best of the year is, a, you know, best in all these categories are coming up Spyderco and Benchmade and, 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 and then a, a design that looks like a Benchmade and then another Spyderco and then another Benchmade, it starts to feel like, wow, it, people, you know, expand your minds a little bit, open up. I mean, there are other things. You can always come back to Benchmade. They'll always be there. Um, you know, you can always vote on the 945 next year to see what it's like, actually. Um, that was kind of my attitude and kind of like taking a, a snotty stance, if you will. And, uh, and I kind of still feel that way, but, uh, there's, there's been a, there's been a vote that I agree with and it's a spider co it's that the answer is spider co. So I, I guess I can't complain too much. And it's, uh, their reader's choice of best overall lineup of 2020 and it's spider co. And I would have to agree. I, I can't disagree. Let me put it that way. This year they came out with the, just in the realm of knives that I like, and they've come out with a lot more. Uh, they came out with the Canis. They came out with the Yojumbo. They came out with the, the K390 and the LC200N versions of some of the classics. Uh, they came out with the uh, the Schlies Swayback, which I, I, I think is a polarizing knife. I haven't watched too many uh, uh, um, reviews on it yet. Uh, I know they're out there. I just uh, haven't, haven't haven't. Uh, they came out with the Spy Opera, the Watu, two really unique, small, classy, interesting knives. Uh, and then they also came out with the with the nightstick, which um, I was talking about, who, who, what do you call, you know, a, such a stabby thing after a blunt, you know, after a blunt tool. And someone, I can't remember who now, uh, sorry, someone uh, let me know that maybe it was nightstick and it's a pun and it's stick like you stick someone with a dagger. And I was like, well, that's good. That's 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 four D underwater chess, man. <laughs> no, just kidding. It's just a, a, a simple thing I, I didn't think of. So, uh, but anyway, and also that kitchen knife. I can't remember the name of it. It's right there, up there on the on the screen there, which looks to me like something a Viking might carry. But I know it's also based on a Japanese blade. So beautiful stuff. And and I would have to say, yeah, overall, Spiderco. Yes. I, I, I agree, and, I, and I'm not saying that and, and thinking that the world should be like, uh, oh, oh, good, I'm so glad Bob accepts this answer. I'm just saying uh, I, I've, I've done a lot of uh, complaining, and so I want to come back and say, look, it's not all bad, and I'm, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to cast dispersions. So, yes, I agree. Spider Co., best overall 2020 lineup. It's a giant lineup, man. How can you go wrong? But there you go. Uh, so let us know right here on this show, what knives you're excited about. You know, is it the Spider Co. lineup? Is it the Benchmade? Uh, or are there other knives? It, are there people making knives that we like um, besides Spider Co. and Benchmade? I don't know. Let me know. Give us a call and, uh, and tell us. 724-466-4487. Excuse me. Sip of delicious coffee. I make fine coffee, I got to say. Uh, but no one makes better coffee than my dad. All right, so we're done with Life Knife News. I, I think uh, this week has been a slow week for, for knife output out there. And uh, I see how things are, you know, people are, are getting, uh, well, people are getting wound up for next year. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens next year. I, I, I am always a I say this, I blame this on my status as youngest child in the family, but I always feel like I know, find things out last. And uh, you could say, well, uh, that's because you're a victim and it's because you were born last and no one tells you, or it could be, well, Bob, you need to uh, do a little bit more investigation and get your, get your ear to the ground a little better. And I try to do that, but I, I'm never ever, I, you know, I'm always finding things out about the latest knife drops, uh, just, just a little bit too, <laughs> too late. So um, anyway, uh, give us a call. Let us know what you're excited about. Give me the drop. What's coming up? I know that GEC is making another run of 47 Vipers coming up. And I know, I know exactly how it's going to happen. I know exactly how it's going to happen. If, if by chance I, I actually get one, 
on the initial drop and don't have to buy it on the secondary market, uh, someone in the mailroom is going to steal it. So actually, I'll just have it sent to home. So that's that's what I'm going to do about that 47 Viper. So let us know the knives you're excited about. Let me know what I should be excited about in 2021 that you've kind of uh, sussed out through your investigations. So now uh, I want to talk about my 10 most carried traditional slash slip joint knives in 2020. And uh, even though I have been corrected, and I should just say slip joint, because they are all slip joints, except for one of the runners up, they're all slip joints. But, excuse me, but sometimes they're not traditional in anything but that mechanism. Um, so some of these are, are traditional in pattern and in material and in build, and then some of these are more modern, so they are just slip joints. So anyway, that's why I say my 10 most carried traditional slash slip joint knives in 2020. Runners up, we will start with runners up and we will start with the first uh, locking knife. And that would be this Buck 112. The Buck 112 Ranger, the smaller brother to the Buck 110. Uh, uh, what is that called? Pocket Hunter, uh, locking Pocket Hunter. Uh, this knife sits on my desk and uh, I have a lot of knives that sit on my desk, but this one gets a lot of action. Uh, you can, maybe if I don't have the light jacked up too high, you can see some of the action on the blade. This is an awesome sharp blade. The 420 um, HC steel that they have, the way they do it. And I don't even think this is a Boss Heat Treat. This is just a, a Walmart special. Uh, but this, this gets so sharp and, and stays sharp reasonably long. And I have this aftermarket, um, opener on it. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, you all know this thing. You all have this thing or want it. And you can actually put it on. Uh, I've seen people put these on um, like flipper only knives. And I think that's pretty cool too, if you like to slow roll your, your knives. So this was, this is a runner's up, a runner up, the Buck 112 Ranger. Second, uh, where is it? Oh, this, this is a kitchen junk drawer knife. This is the uh, Buck Large Stockman. And I'm a sucker for a Stockman pattern. This one is, uh, you know, has some pretty, pretty weak springs. And uh, I shouldn't say weak, I should say easy. Uh, but but great blades, you know, great blades. They're, they're hollow ground. Um, you know, they're pretty, they're not that thin behind the edge, whatever. They they do the job as a kitchen drawer knife, as a throw in your pocket and and do work in the backyard knife. This is a this is a great, great thing. I use this sheep's foot blade the most. And uh, it's one of the most used because it's the most accessible. It's right there. A lot of stuff happens in my house in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen all the time. From the time I get home from work and settle in, I, I, I end up in the kitchen. I'm there for a couple hours. Um, lots of stuff happens in there. Lots of boxes get opened with this knife. Um, this is also a Walmart purchase. The reason I didn't, uh, this isn't on the list is because I don't carry it ever, but it gets used. Same thing with this and same thing with this last knife, which, uh, you might be familiar with. I I've shown it off in the past. This is an old Cataragus 2229 pen knife, uh, that came from my grandfather. And this was in a small like cigar box full of kind of old busted up knives that he gave me a long time ago. He, he also gave me a lot of really nice knives. Uh, but this one has uh, has been with me since college doing all sorts of dirty work. Uh, it's got this clip point blade. And uh, when I smoked a pipe, this was my pipe knife. Yes, yes. I was quite the intellectual when I smoked a pipe. Uh, as you can see, the beautiful old bone handle is chipped off there. And uh, the, the shield was pinned and that's gone. Cataragus is gone. Um, but I love this little pen knife. And I've thought about uh, doing like a refurb, a rehab on this. But then it wouldn't, it would lose a lot of its character. A lot of what I love it for. So it will forever be half naked on this side and just scarred on this side. Love this Cataragus knife. So these are the runners up to the to the most carried traditional slip joint knives. And the reason uh, runners up, not carried, but used a lot. 
Okay, so now these are in no real particular order. Uh, I actually don't pay attention. I just know that these got carried a lot. These were the ones I kept going back to uh, this past year. And uh, towards the end of the year, I got a couple of new knives, but a lot of them, I mean, a couple. Well, I got a couple of uh, GECs, you know, that, that I bought intending to carry, but realized after I got them that they were just more in my large safe queen slip joint sub collection uh, because they're just kind of just too big to carry around unless you do the old, I'm not gonna call it that, unless you do the, the belt sheet thing. And I'm not, I'm not gonna do that yet. Not yet, not 50 yet. And then, and then maybe after that, maybe I'll start doing it then. Sorry, I don't. I didn't mean to cast aspersions on young men who wear those. It's just I live in a place where people would be clutching their pearls and wringing their hands and gasping if I walked by with a with a with a knife on my belt. So, there you go. All right. So, in no particular order, the Great Eastern Cutlery Field and Farm line uh, bullnose. This is the number seventy one. This is a. Uh, traditional work knife in that sort of sod buster uh, bullnose style. Bullnose is a, refers to that blade style, that blade shape. And, um, you know, I didn't realize this till recently, but sod buster is not a generic name. Sod buster is Case's name for this type of knife. I have sort of uh, erroneously called them all sod busters, like kind of like they're all Kleenex. No, they're not all Kleenex. They're tissues. This has a uh, very appealing... Um, canvas, natural tan, canvas tan micarta. Now I talk about field and farm. That's their line of, um, you know, they have three, they have the titty unexcelled line, which is their fancy dressed up knives. And then they have just the sort of regular GEC uh, um, knives like this. And then they have the field and, and farm, which are even dressed, dressed down even more and, and really meant for work. And this is a, uh, a fine example of that. Um, so I'm a big fan of the bullnose slash sodbuster style of knife. Uh, incidentally, it has to have this big pivot. Uh, when you look at the case, and I got this information from uh, Tobias Gibson uh, on YouTube, but it, when you see case sodbusters, uh, when they do them in bone, they, they don't use this big pivot. They use a small pivot that's more like this. And... Uh, in that case, that is technically not a sod buster. So, so what do you think of that? <laughs> uh, but still, they are pretty nice looking. The, those case, uh, you know, I think, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do with that. Uh, I'll arrange them on that board uh, as we go. So next is the, what do I have next? Oh, this knife I use all the time. This is the case. It's just, I just bought it at Dick's years ago called this just the jackknife. Uh, if you look at it, it's a serpentine, uh, equal end serpentine jackknife. I, it's in one of their worker lines. You know, every year they put out a line of knives with a smooth Delrin handles. Well, sometimes they're jigged, but Delrin handles and then unfinished stainless blades. So if you look at this, here, let me get the right angle on it. If you look at it, you can see the grind lines. Let me see it with this other light. Jim, I'm going to switch cameras over here and see if this will... Do you see? Well, anyway, this is a part of the Worker series. You can see the grind lines on the blade. They leave them somewhat unfinished, like beautifully finished unfinished, and uh, and then they put the Delrin. And so this knife uh, lives in my dresser drawer. Uh, if you saw my recent collection, you saw the little insert of my dresser drawer where I keep all of these, uh, most of my slip joints anyway. And uh, this is always coming out for little things in the bedroom. I don't know, you know, just little tasks. Uh, it ends up in the bathroom all the time. Uh, it's never rusted, which is nice. But uh, yeah, this thing is this thing is a great little knife and a very uncommon pattern. It's weird that I found it at, at Dick's. I'm glad I did. But, you know, you, there, there aren't too many just straight up jackknives made by Case that they just call jackknife. So anyway. This one, definitely, definitely one of the most carried and used because that gets carried around the house. That gets popped in the pocket and walked around with. All right, next, the GEC uh, calf roper. Now, something cool about the calf roper. This is a uh, the number 66 frame. And as you can see, it's a three-bladed uh, stockman. It's 
funny, incidentally, just a little funny thing. Uh, I used to think stockmen referred to guys in warehouses going through boxes. And I would think, yeah, the stockman's a perfect knife. You got these three different knives. And then I realized uh, through research that no, stockman refers to like, you know, people who are working with livestock. Uh, sorry for the bump there. And uh, you've got the master clip point blade, the main blade with GEC's gorgeous clip point blade, love them. And then you have uh, you have the sheep's foot and then you have the little spay blade. Uh, I think that this, you'd have to be spaying squirrels with this small uh, little spay blade, but still uh, a very useful blade, very useful blade shape. It's nice that you have a little bit of a point, but you're not gonna really stab into anything with it. So you have the benefit of a point, uh, but the, um, but enough of a, of a clip and blunt uh, ness up there that you're not going to penetrate into the organs, I guess. Um, so great knife. And if you look at this compared to the other stockman I showed you from Buck, you can see a real difference in in quality. Look at look at how they line up in the inside the wells. If you look at the GEC, you'll see that they've nestled the blades in there very tightly. They've ground the blades uh, kind of uneven and canted them in uneven ways. Uh, like if you look at this, it's been bent even so that they all fit very, very uh, snugly in there uh, with two springs. So three blades on two springs. And now a less expensive way to make a knife is like they did the Stockman at Buck. This was a fraction of the cost. So they did three springs across the bottom and then no, no um, special nestling or, or shaping of the blades to get them to fit in. You don't have to if you use the three springs. Obviously, it makes it wider and, uh, you know, less premium. But that's just a little, you know, that's a, that's a little thing for collectors and people who are interested in that kind of thing to worry about. Uh, it's not anything to worry about, but a sign of quality is to see how Great Eastern Cutlery uh, halves their, or what's the word? Uh, shapes their blades and cants them so that they all fit into a tiny little space without rubbing. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, next, the Lion Steel Gatano. Now I mentioned the Navaja earlier when I was talking about my uh, my pocket check, I was talking about the large cold steel um, Espada based on the Navaja. Well, this is, man, if any knife I have in my collection is based on the Navaja. Look at this, such a beautiful shape. You've got this very wide, uh, clip point blade with a very long clip. Uh, I like how it expands, uh, how the blade profile expands. Uh, you have uh, from the Ricasso, you have the uh, edge, the cutting edge dipping down in, a, in, a, in an aggressive way. And then you have the spine uh, flaring up until you uh, reach that break there with the swedge. So it, it really gives it an aggressive Look, it also widens the blade so that the the, uh, the flat grind, the high saber grind, uh, can be as efficient as possible. Uh, that broadness adds to the thinness behind the edge, if you will. Um, and then you look at this uh, handle. Very rarely do I go for a, a wood handle over micarta or bone on a uh, traditional, but uh, I just love this. What is it, olive wood, I think? Now I can't remember what this is. Uh, let me know if you know. I think it's olive wood from olive trees. Uh, but it's got the titanium bolster. It's got this gorgeous handle and a clip. So this does. This is a great back pocket sort of uh, uh, slip joint. Because, you know, a slip joint of this size, if you don't have it in a little slip case in your pocket, it's just going to end up going horizontal on you and, uh, and really being annoying. Now this thing has... Mm, one hell of a, a lock. So it's it's very, very strong. And actually, it closes so strongly that it makes me worry that there's blade wrap. Blade wrap is when you close a knife, uh, uh, a slip joint knife, and uh, the force of closing it sends it beyond its stopping point, and it hits the liner. And you'll see a little ding in the, you'll see a little flat spot on the edge. Uh, this does have a little flat spot on the edge. I can see in this light right here. So I have to do more sharpening to get rid of that. That that is that is a a bug, not a feature for sure. 
So I got to work on that. So I'm, I'll just take the edge down a little bit. I've done this before to take the edge down just a little bit and that'll probably do it. But the spring on this is so ridiculously strong, um, ridiculous in a good way, uh, that if you're not trusting of non-locking knives, if, you, if you're if you not trusting of the slip joint uh, mechanism, but you can't have a locking knife, this I would very much consider. And I don't know if, I don't. this is my only lion steel uh, folder. Uh, I mean, uh, slip joint. I don't know if their other knives are as stout as this, but I've heard others talk about this spring in particular on the uh, on the Gatano. So you might want to check this out if you don't if you don't if you want a locking knife but you can't have one. That's got quite a spring. Next, another Great Eastern cutlery. What do you know? Uh, and this is uh, I love the single bladed Great Eastern cutleries, and uh, I've acquired a few recently, but I haven't had them long enough to to make this list. But this one I was carrying quite a bit this year, and that is the. Uh, the Great Eastern Cutlery number 33 or 38. Uh, we are giving one of these away through the uh, Instagram, I mean, through the Patreon giveaway. And uh, we're giving it away in the green tractor bone, which I love so much. Beautiful blade, serpentine, uh, or no, not, is that serpentine? Well, swell end jack, I'm not sure what you call that, uh, with that awesome muskrat uh, clip point blade or California clip. You hear it called a couple of different things. Um, uh, next is the Gentleman Jack by Medford Knives. Uh, this is their first, uh, so far, one and only slip joint, and it's built like a Medford knife. <laughs> what can I say? Uh, it it has a, this is a nice little feature here, made in the United States of America. It's got fantastic fit and finish. I mean, really fantastic fit. So flat. When okay, when it's when the blade is halfway closed at the half stop, the spring is completely flat across the back. Uh, I would like this in a slightly stronger pull, but uh, it's a as it is, it's a it's a great it's a great knife uh, for the stoutness of the build. I would want to I want just a a stronger spring. Uh, this long pull here grabs the finger wonderfully because it's very deeply hollow ground, and so. The two convex uh, uh, sides of the blade come up this way, and then you've got the little uh, the, the long pull dug in there, and it just it just grips your finger beautifully. So yeah, uh, war. I, I carry that quite a bit. War, <laughs> like this is fashion. I carry that one quite a bit. Uh, it's a very very uh, stout knife. S thirty five VN. My only uh, my only one on this list in S thirty five VN. Next on the opposite range of uh, cost is the uh, Culpepper by Kershaw. What a great, what a great knife. This is a 7CR or whatever, uh, you know, kind of cheap Chinese stainless steel, beautifully ground and actually holds an edge quite well. Uh, I've used this a lot for boxes. Comes very sharp, stays sharp reasonably long, gets sharp very quickly. Uh, very nice spring. Not as stout as the... Uh, as the Gitano, but but nice and uh, you know it's got a it's got about a seven pull and no half stop and then you have jimping right on the top. It's a it's a great great knife. And by the way, is that not a beautifully shaped clip point? It's you got the same kind of the same thing as the Gitano happening. You know you have the spine and the belly departing from one another until it reaches the clip, and it just uh, gives it kind of an aggressive look, but also widens the blade and makes it more useful. This is in kind of a traditional Barlow style, though, though long for a Barlow, because it's got this long uh, strengthening bolster, if you will, strengthening. So yeah, it's got a long uh, bolster, making it a Barlow. That's the Kershaw Culpepper. Next is the Rough Rider Micarta Work Knife in blue. I take it over to the knife cam. This knife uh, in its initial black, uh, version and then in this subsequent blue version, just blew the doors off of uh, off of uh, Rough Rider this year. I mean, they just couldn't keep these things in stock, and it's no wonder. Now this is the GEC forty seven. Basically, I don't I don't want to say it's a copy, but it's a sway back, and it's very similar. Um, just a, a, a Chinese made you know factory knife, but same uh, very 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 similar 
uh, dimensions, I should say, not specs. And uh, very, very, very nicely made with a stout, but not too gnarly spring. You can, you don't need that, uh, you don't need that nail nick. You can just pinch and open it, but it's uh, definitely going to stay open on you, especially if you're using it in the correct way. And uh, I'm glad I got my hands on one of this. Uh, I, I see what the what the hubbub was about. This is a, a really, really nice knife. It feels uh, it feels way more than budget. I wouldn't say it feels premium, but it feels like a great, great knife. And it's um, denim micarta. Big fan of blue jeans there, people. So denim micarta work knife there. Uh, second to last is also a Rough Rider. I carried this Barlow quite a bit. Fits beautifully in the pocket and in all of my little uh, slip slip case things. And uh, got a very, very sharp and broad hollow ground pen blade. And the same could be said for the, I almost wiped that with my finger, which would have hurt and uh, gone against the purposes there. But a very, very, very sharp, thinly ground. Uh, this this knife, uh, this blade in particular, you can see the wobbles in it. It's not It's not perfectly ground. Look right there. Well, if you can't see it, it's uh, you can see little waves in the main bevel uh, from the spine down to the edge. But who cares? I don't care. I think I paid twelve dollars for it, and I love it. And uh, it because it works great. It's in smooth white bone. It's it's appealing. So, uh, and lastly, there's kind of again on the opposite end of things, and this is my all time favorite. Uh, uh, non grandpa knife because my grandfather's knives uh, eclipse all of these in terms of value. Um, but it's this Great Eastern Cutlery number 15, and it was my first Great Eastern Cutlery knife. And uh, look at those covers just absolutely beautiful autumn leaf jig bone with beautiful warm yellow tones, but also reds in there. And it just, ah. Uh, so beautiful to me. Uh, okay, sorry, I keep using that's my crutch word. Crutch word is beautiful now. I'm not using um, I'm just gonna say beautiful. Uh, great spade blade, <laughs> excellent spade blade there. Um, nice patina. This is, uh, by the way, those spade blades work great as steak knives. Uh, and a wonderful, wonderful clip point. I love the Great Eastern Cutlery clip point blades. Okay, so there it is. That's the number 15. This is the boy's knife. I have a number of uh, 14s also. I have three, I have two 14s, which look like this, but smaller, and uh, three 15s. So that's just the frame uh, with different setups in the, in the blades. I adore these knives. So these have been the 10 most carried and 10 most used traditional slash slip joint knives of the year 2020. And, um, these lists are not meant to be uh, lists of the best knives that came out in 2020. I think the, the Gentleman Jack came out this year. Uh, the Katano, I think, was uh, 2019. Uh, and the Culpepper, I think, was 2018 or 2019. So these are not new knives, but uh, these are the ones that I carried the most because I've had them and had a chance to discover how really excellent they carry, how beautiful they work. And then just each one of them has its own aesthetic appeal to me. And, and uh, I just can't, can't get over it. I'm not getting out of this phase. Usually this traditional phase passes very quickly for me. Uh, but these days, <laughs> these days it's just sticking around. So anyway, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you so much for watching uh, and checking out these 10 most carried slip joint knives. It's the kind of thing I'd like to, you know, do over a half hour with my wives and uh, with my wives with my wife and daughters uh but that that effort wouldn't last for for more than a minute love to do it with my friends but my friends love me for things other than knives so i'm so grateful that you're here uh and that we can share this time together to geek out so hard uh over knives uh don't forget to check out the knife junkie uh, merchandise on the website uh, check it out it's some pretty cool stuff uh i I, I love the don't take dull for an answer stuff. Um, uh, you know, I like that tagline of when I started using it, I couldn't believe no one else was using it. <laughs> and so I started saying it and, uh, and it's, I don't know, it just makes me feel good to say. So 
check out those t-shirts also check out the logo t-shirts and uh, and uh, there's another line that that jim has uh, uh a person without a knife is a person without a life which is cool cool design he came up with and uh and like that so uh check us out tomorrow night on thursday night knives and uh call us on the listener line 724-466-4487 and uh well that's it for me and for jim working the magic behind the switcher does that not look festive and beautiful i love it beautiful i had to get it in there one or two more times so for jim working his magic thank you very much i'm bob the knife junkie demarco saying take care and have a lovely week Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.